Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Albert for another episode of Let's Talk About Synthesizers and stuff, right? Because that's what we like to do, right? So I wanted to talk a little bit more about the Roland SH4D just because I've been working with it so much. I know I've already put out a couple of videos about this topic. Um, I wanted to focus a little bit on the live performance aspect of it one more time, but this time specifically look on how the sound is routed within the instrument not everything is clear and also something that I, I work around that I've been trying out with the routing of the instrument so that um, to try to have more clarity as possible more playability with the different voices of it so my main concern with this machine right this for me this four voices for me is really like something like electronic arranger or something like that something of that like um, the way I like to use it is to basically really have mostly three synths and one bass line, one bass voice. Uh, sometimes it's a pad, sometimes it's key, sometimes it's effects, okay, leads, you name it. Um, the main problem, my biggest fear was, okay, I just don't want this to turn into a mud fest, you know. I would love to make all these voices live together without having sound like just mush, generally speaking, because that's the main concern when lots of different sounds are coming from the same box. That's kind of easy to to let happen. And it did happen to me a little bit, because at first, the sounds, and I read online other people saying the same thing, the sounds kind of sounded a little not like weak but just like a low in volume so i had to play with the compressors uh, and this thing has lots of different layers of effects that you can use um may even i don't want to say too many because you know it's just like more possibilities to you but as a person that got into the instrument i wanted to make it sound right to my ears and first it sounded very low and then after i started touching some things it was like very loud for a while until then i toned it down i kind of had to revisit uh different patches that i made before all that so eventually um things got pulled out together now uh as i said before i usually have you can look here and then if it's visible this thing is very hard to film by the way um track one is usually my main key okay uh two is usually for pads three is bass and four is for leads or if i need anything extra sometimes i don't get to use track number four because when you're live the digitact plus some one shots i can have with the sp404 plus the three voices i mean it's plenty but it's nice to have the room so anyways if you can see here in the panning i try to pan um all the keyboards to the left so one two and four i've panned to the left and number three which is my base i pan all the way to the right this way there's two exits uh two outputs the behind the the synthesizer and so i pan that in two separate controls where i love to have a little bit more gain control uh, on the base and i could add some extra stuff over the keyboards if i wanted to through my um, sending returns for my mixer, my pedal board, and whatsoever. Now, obviously, this is kind of a workaround, and I'm still working my way with it. The main problem is that if you use any of the send effects over here, um, the those channels are stereo. So even if you mute um, your even if you mute your keyboard and you still keep playing. Let's see if I can do it here. Now let me mute the keyboard channel. So only the bass should be playing. Let's see. So I'm playing a note. Obviously you can't hear anything. But if I send some reverb in. This is basically just the reverb you hear from the right track. Which is right now is just the bass. If I mute the bass. I mute the bass. Okay, nothing. Uh, this is supposed to sound from the left side. So what what I did is that basically, I you have to be very. Um, you, it's easy to go overboard with these effects over here. As good as they sound, I do like to use them for certain dramatic effects. But generally speaking, 
Maybe I might use a little bit of chorus here and there, but the reverb and the delay, I do like them, but I have them outboard. I have like some dedicated pedals and I like to work with those because they control everything else I do. Um, and I don't know, they, I haven't spent, I will say that I have not spent a lot of time trying to work out the reverb and the delays in here. There is plenty, there is lots of options. I've heard some really great sounds coming out of it, um, but I would say that in the overall mix, um, I haven't personally found yet a cool way to implement them. So I like to use something else. But anyways, splitting the, the routing of the instrument kind of gave me more possibilities on the mixer, right? On the, and I feel like, at least for me, it keeps things a little bit more organized when it comes to uh, where does the sound go. Now, um, there is also certain tone effects and certain pattern effects. Um, there's lots of layers to these things, as I said before. Uh, I was testing them before. I'm not going to go through it now because there's like really like so many effects into this thing. But some of them are stereo effects and therefore they will bleed into the other channel. Others are not are mono. So they will like most compressors will not bleed into the other channel. So you can still use them and the routing will just go all in the same direction. It will not going to, it's not going to bleed into the other channel if you're interested in doing um, this sort of thing. Um, another thing that I noticed, and this is like still on the volume kind of thing, but for some reason, the amp level button over here, it is, for some reason, it does not get saved. And I don't, re I don't really know what's the hierarchy between the amp level over here and just the mix level, um, which one comes first. It's kind of like I haven't been able to determine that and the manual doesn't really say. What I know is that the level of the instrument is not saved within the patch. So moving this knob is the only thing that doesn't prompt. Once you open the right menu, it doesn't open the, the it doesn't say that something has changed into the patch so that you can save it. But anyways, I'm still having lots of fun with this. I hope you have some insight by listening to me talking about it. Until next time, Albers out.